Okay, so let's finish up First Magazine tonight. Um, they have an easy fruity treat recipe here on page 69. It's a phone-friendly snap, share, or save and share. It's called Strawberry Shortcake Parfait. Now, what really caught my eye is the way they served this because it reminded me of my grandparents' trips that we used to take to the Po Folks restaurant. When we would go there, their soft drinks was always served in a mason jar. And this little parfait is served in a mason jar. Anyway, active time is 15 minutes. Total time is 15 minutes, and it serves four people. You use 16 shortbread cookies, such as Laura Dune, two cups of strawberries, three 3.25 ounce a cup snack size vanilla pudding, one teaspoon grated orange zest, one cup thawed frozen whipped topping from eight ounce container. Now you're going to coarsely crush your cookies. Trim and quarter the strawberries in a bowl. Stir together pudding and zest until blended. Dividing evenly, fill the bottoms of four eight ounce jars or tall glasses with half the cookies, then half the whipped topping, half of the strawberries, and half of the pudding mixture. Repeat layering once and cover, chill, and red till ready to serve. Your calories per serving, 304. Your protein is 3 grams, your carbs are 44 grams, fibers is 2 grams, sugar is 25 grams, cholesterol is 1 milligram, sodium 246 milligrams, your total fat is 13 grams, and your saturated fat is 5 grams. Now here's your health bonus. Speed your slimming with strawberries. The berries get their color from the plant pigments that boost fat burn to help you lose 3 times more weight. Okay, and now the Smart Food Solutions. Uh, they have a quick tip to help make cooking stress-free. And here's a pro secret from Trisha Yearwood. Trisha's key to potato salad with 49% fewer calories. For a healthier take on potato salad, Food Network's host Trisha Yearwood subs in the sweet potatoes for the white spuds, replaces some of the mayo with the yogurt to mix one half cup mayo, one half cup Greek yogurt, one half cup of chopped scallions, one chopped seeded red pepper, two tablespoons of chopped chives, one teaspoon of orange zest, two teaspoons of cider vinegar, and one half teaspoon of Tabasco. Now add four cooked cube peeled sweet potatoes and season to taste. The smart swap, it takes a minuses calorie cut of 270, minuses your fat grams cut as 33, and it adds four grams of fiber. The numbers reflect the sweet potato salad instead of the traditional. Now when making pie crust, you do everything right. Start with your cold butter and ice water, but the dough still comes out tough. That's why professional pastry chefs use a combination of equal parts cold water and cold vodka. Water promotes the formation of gluten, a protein that makes dough tough, while the ethanol in the vodka inhibits it, insulting it into a perfectly flaky pie crust every time. Tame overly harsh garlic. Even when you use plenty of basil in your pesto recipe, the taste of raw garlic can still overpower. Next time, try this fix. Thread unpeeled cloves onto a skewer, submerge in boiling water for three minutes. The quick blanch mellows their bite. Bonus, now the cloves will pop right out of their skins. To trick to evenly cook chicken. Boneless chicken breasts come uneven in thickness, so getting the thicker parts to cook without the thinner edges drying out can be tricky. Next time, place the breast between two sheets of plastic wrap, then starting at the center of the thickest part of working out to the edges, use a heavy bottom pot to gently pound the meat to the uniform thickness. Toss together terrific truffles in half the time. Using fork, mash one very ripe banana. Stir in one third cup of almond butter, two tablespoons of cocoa powder and roll into one inch balls. Roll into additional cocoa powder and chill until firm. And that's your truffle. Okay. Little things. Fourth of July fun for everyone. This is the home section which celebrates the day with a relaxed backyard setting that's full of classic American charm and surprising extras. Set the mood for happy with a patriotic scene. The secret to creating an Independence Day tablescape that is laid back yet chic. Combining red, white, and blue, blue tabletop elements, eye-catching patterns, accents, and casual Americana charm. Now here's a patio table dressed up with a blue cloth and crisp classic sea sucker runner snipped from the discount fabric. 
layering on a top, top of sparkling votives, rustic mason jar cups, and party store party store star accents furthers the festive look while plush stripped pillows complete the relaxed feel. It's a perfectly inviting spot to celebrate with the loved ones. Now to add instant pizzazz with star spangled settings. Donald can, cannot talk tonight. Styling with a stack of textual dental rare, the star kiss napkins and the cute popcorn pails add a sweet nostalgic touch to the setting. To do, set a white dinner plate atop a galvanized charger, while then lay a folded star print cloth or, or a paper napkin over the plate. Top with a red scalloped lunch plate and add with a white soup bowl. To finish, add a mini pail of popcorn. And the secret source is a small red patriotic die cut star pails are $14 for six at Oriental trading.com table styled by Jeanette Colzio founder of Rosemary Thyme blogspot.com follow her on Instagram at Rosemary Thyme blogspot.com that's R-O-S-E-M-A-R-Y T-H-Y-M-E B-L-O-G-S-P-O-T C-O-M offer fresh picked flair with a festive centerpiece, all it takes is a creative, dazzling floral focus to focus on a handful of garden blooms, a picture, and a few party store extras. To do, add three blue and three white hydrangea stems to a water-filled glass pitcher, tuck in four red gerba daisies and a mini American flag, add a star-printed napkin and a candle cup and the party store star accent to the silver tray, then set the pitcher on top. Delight everyone with red, white, and berry parfaits. These pretty mason jar cake parfaits set as dessert and tabletop decor. To do, bake an angel food cake per mix per the box instructions. Or pick up a store-bought cake. Cut into bite-sized pizzas and add a few to the bottom of the eight, six 8-ounce eight quil quilted mason jars. And then sprinkle on a few raspberry, blueberry, sliced strawberries, then spoon whipped topping on the top. Repeat the process until the jars are full to the top and top with more berries. Ooh, doesn't that sound good? Now on the next page, I just love this bouquet. It's a patriotic bouquet to celebrate the 4th. What's new? This 4th of July, florists are styling red, white, and blue garden blooms in casual baskets for fast, festive centerpieces that burst with excitement. Here's spiky blue Nigelia pops off a bed of ruffled red, white, sweet William for a firework-like effect. And then it says, the floral pro, Gabrielle De Francis of Gabrielle's Hand Designs in Connecticut. The basket adds American feel. It's a lively display for a barbecue. Now get the look. Start by filling a 6-inch tall vase halfway with water and set it in an 8-inch tall basket. Snip 7 red sweet William, 7 white sweet William, and 3 handfuls of blue Nigelia stems 10 to 14 inches. Next, insert half of the Nigelia into a vase. Form a lush base. Insert the sweet William, spacing the stems in the randomly relaxed fashion. To finish, tuck in remaining Nigelia stems and display on a tabletop. The Insider's Secret Now, Sweet William is a relative of carnations, and these durable blooms can last for two weeks or more in the vase, if harvested properly from the garden. Now, to do, choose your Sweet William stems with just a few open flowers as they will continue to bloom in the vase. After cutting, drop stems in a bucket of clean water and soak for two to three hours. To condition before arranging, refresh the water every two days. Next, paperclip. Smart Home Solutions. Now, these are quick tips that save time and money. Clever on-the-go storage spices. Now, when packing for a vacation rental or a camping trip, you want to bring along spices to whip up tasty meals, but you don't want to haul the bulky spice jars. Here's a better way. Transfer the herbs and seasonings into a clean Tic Tac container and mark each with a Sharpie on the printed label. The compact, durable plastic container packs neatly in a small space. An easy pour opening makes it a cinch to measure out just enough seasoning. Yum! Here's a quick poll. How do you keep sand out of your car? After a fun day at the lake or the ocean, avoid the hassle of vacuuming sand from your car with these reader tricks. 58% love this idea. 
Sprinkle baby powder on sandy feet and legs, then brush it off, says Linda Ray. The powder absorbs the moisture so the grains come off with ease. 42% love this idea. Brush the skin with old makeup brush before getting into your car, says Carol Huff. This will keep the sand off where it belongs. Money savers. Outsmart the mosquitoes for pennies. All the natural way to stop mosquitoes from spoiling the outdoor fun. Fill a spray bottle with one cup of witch hazel and 20 drops of peppermint essential oil. Then spritz around your outdoor space. The pets will detest the powerful scent, so they'll stay away. Six, the money you're going to save for this little helpful tip is $6 for the citronella candle. Easy ways to restore faded out outdoor furniture. If your wooden patio furniture is looking a bit weather weary, you can revive it in no time with a low cost chemical free fix. To do, simply rub a moistened tea bag over the wood. The tannis in the tea will act as a dry stain or dye to stain the faded wood and mask the scratches so the outdoor tables and chairs will look good as new. Freshen up your mattress with a sweet sleep. Summer nights can leave mattresses with a funky sweat odor. Whisk it away with a simple trick. Combine one-fourth cup of baking soda and six drops of lavender oil in a sieve and sprinkle it on the mattress. Now you're going to let it sit for two hours before you vacuum it up. That baking soda will absorb the odors and the lavender will leave behind a sleep-inducing scent. Here's a show how. A muffin tin filled with toppings makes a genius ice cream sundae bar. So in other words, you can go get your ice cream in a bowl and... Use your muffin tin, as long as you put your little muffin cups in the tin, put you some uh, chocolate uh, bits in there, maybe some nuts or fruit of some sort, even sprinkles, and take a little spoon on each of the cup, and then let them dip out of those muffin cups to decorate their ice cream. Isn't that a neat way of doing it? It sure is. Here's a reader tip. Found more closet space. Even though I recognize my closet is often I reorganize my closet as often as possible. I do try to get rid of any items I don't wear. Space can be tight. Then I heard a great tip from a friend who's a professional organizer. Hang clothing on the rod from the shortest to the longest. This provides open space and under the shorter items to add a small rolling cart or even an extra shelf. Tracy Curtis from Memphis gave us that tip. Here's Life Made Easy. Ten Brilliant Uses for Plastic Bottles. Outsmort outsmart doggy boredom. On rainy days when he's stuck inside, Buster chews up all his toys and it's a pain to keep replacing them. To entertain him without running to the store, make a fun safe chew toy to do. Place an empty plastic water bottle inside a sock and tie it to the knot of the end of it. Your furry friend will love crackling sound as his new toy makes and it will save you time and money. Number two, separate eggs when you bake. Now here's a foolproof way to separate an egg white for the cake that you're making for the church potluck. Crack that egg into a bowl, then squeeze an empty plastic water bottle over the yolk, and then release. Squeezing the bottle creates a vacuum effect, sucking that yolk right up and leaving the whites behind. Number three, keep dry goods fresh and tidy. No need to shell out for extra storage containers for pantry staples like rice and beans. The alternative repurpose of plastic water bottle, simply wash and dry a bottle thoroughly, then use a funnel to fill it with grains or beans and screw on the cap. The sealed bottle keeps food fresh plus saves shelf space and allows you to easily spot the ingredient you're looking for. Number four, chill picnic foods without the mess. Now the last time you went on a picnic, the ice in your cooler melted before you arrived and made everything soggy. Not next time, the night before your next outdoor fun, Fill a few plastic bottles three quarters of the way with water and freeze. The frozen bottles will keep your food cold without leaking all over the meal. Your bonus is once melted, you've, you're, you have cool water to drink. Number five, sprinkle a DIY sprinkler, or create a DIY sprinkler, sorry. On hot days when the little ones visit, you need to have a sprinkler to play in. No need to buy one. Instead, cut a th three one-inch long slit in one side of an empty plastic one liter bottle. Secure the hose nozzle to put the bottle at top with a duct tape, fasten it tight, then turn on the water spigot. Voila, you have fun. Number six, water plants while away. You want to keep your house plants watered while you're away for a long weekend. Well, fill a clean, empty water bottle, then nestle the neck of the bottle into the plant's soil. Repeat the process for each plant. 
This self-watering system ensures your plants won't go dry. 7. Outsmart plastic bag chaos. It's a handy to keep spare shopping bags around, but when you stash them under the sink, they scatter all over the cabinet. What can help? Cut the bottom of a 2-inch plastic bottle and remove the cap. Then stuff the plastic bags through the op open bottom, and then the op bottle will keep the bags neatly contained, and you can easily pull one out of the bottle top whenever needed. Number 8. Nix a fruit fly problem. Ugh, setting out a bowl of fresh fruit on your counter in the summer seems to attract an annoying swarm of fruit flies. Now, to keep them at bay, create an easy trap. To do, fill a plastic bottle half the way with apple cider vinegar, add two drops of dish soap, and place near the fruit bowl. The pest will be attracted to the sweet vinegar, and the fly will inside the bottle. Then the sticky soap will trap them there. Number 9. Easily corral project tools. When you're working on a project, it can be a pain to have lug around a bulky toolbox just for a few tools you'll need. Instead, stash them in a DIY tool toter, and you can take them while you work. To do, cut the top of the third of the two-liter plastic bottle, wrap the duct tape around the bottom of the bottle to help it reinforce it, then fill the tools needed, and problem is solved. 10. Soothe Tired Tootsies. Now, it was a beautiful day to be out in the park, but now your feet are aching and sore. The doctor recommended trick for that fast relief, freeze a bottle of water and roll it under your arches for a minute. Pause for a minute, then repeat the roll and rest cycle for 10 minutes. The cold temperature of the bottle combined with a rolling massage will help ease the inflammation and tightness. Ah, here's life smarts to have your best road trip ever. Planning to hit the road this summer, so are 85% of the Americans according to the survey. Here's how to make your vacation fun, safe, and memorable. Memorable, sorry. To build in fun, app your map. As folks say, it's not just the destination, it's the journey. And today's app helps you find charming stops to make along the way. One great option is Roadside America app, says Uflasoth of MissTourist.com. It has a directory of the country's unique attraction, like the Leaning Tower of, of Niles in Illinois, or the Dis Dis Dinosaur World in Kentucky, and will map them out for you. Another great option in the Road Trippers app, which offers route planning tools and lets you connect with loved ones so they can suggest sites to see. Also smart, stopping on a local farmer's market for snacks, for edible souvenirs. The American Farmer's Market app will help you find the nearest Fruitopia. To visit hot spots, go early or late. The most popular road trip destination is national parks. Reservations are often open on rolling basis to learn when the new dates become available follow the parks on their social media and pages to ensure to get in pay entrances fees on online ahead of time with recreation.gov if you want to see more popular sites definitely get to the lot early says riley mahoney founder of the parks expert.com or go late most guests don't realize the charm of visiting at night fewer crowds and stargazing is amazing also smart, can't snag a camp campsite inside a park? Visit the dyrt.com or hipcamp.com for campsites nearby. This way you can drive into the park for day trips. To stay safe, check this key battery. Water check, roadside kit check. But what does the experts say we often forget? An extra battery for your key fob, says AAA. Rep. Ellen Edmonds, when it, your fob is close to your car, it's constantly trying to communicate with it, she reveals. On a long road trip, this can drain the battery until it eventually dies. Just pop open the fob to see what kind of battery it takes. It's also a good idea to give your tires a daily check. Hot weather increases that tire pressure, making gas mileage less efficient. Just get out your pressure gauge. If the tire registers too high, release some air. Also smart, a surprising safety tool, gum says safe it helps you release tension while you drive now slash costs on the road big gas savings is gas buddy and w a z e app show local gas stations and the prices so you compare to find the cheapest also aim to fill your tank when it's half empty as gas evaporates more quickly then there's more air in the tank the more air the faster it gets used up you can dine on a dime Download the local Saver app to have restaurant coupons sent to your phone. Traveling with the kiddos, head to Kids Meals 
kidsmealdeals.com. That's K-I-D-S-M-E-A-L-D-E-A-L-S.com. And if you can, stick to lunch hours. Restaurants typically charge 10% less than during dinner hours. Lodge in for less. Score steep savings on a last-minute accommodation with an app like Hotel Tonight or Priceline, where rooms are sometimes discounted as much as 50%. Okay. Four stories that will warm your heart from the bliss break. Unexpected grace. Sweet smiles all around. I was grocery shopping with my six-year-old grandson, Ian, when he spotted Stars and Stripe cupcakes and begged me to buy them. I knew that his mom was making a cake for the family 4th of July barbecue, but seeing that sad look on his face, I bought them anyway. On our way home, I spotted a car with a flat tire on the side of the road and pulled over. The frazzled mom told me that this, over the sobs, her three children, that her cell phone was dead and she couldn't call for help. I let her use my phone, but the little ones grew more frustrated. It was then that Eon brought out the cupcakes and asked if it was okay for the kids to have some. The grateful mom nodded and soon the kids sat happily licking the frosting from their fingers. Lucky we got those cupcakes, Ian beamed, and I laughed, delighted from his kind heart. They saved the day. Angela Fleming, 50, from Little Rock, Arkansas. Country Wisdom. Home is where the heart is. When my father passed away, I worried about my mother living alone in their house. I often ask if she'd want to look at a beautiful new condo, but she shoo me off saying beauty is in seen with the heart, not the eyes. One day, as I stared at the faded pea green kitchen walls, I was about to suggest a condo again when Mom told me your dad painted this as a surprise when we moved in. I admit it wasn't the color I would have chosen, but I loved it because he did it out of love. From there, she led me to the hall closet where a line of pencil marks charted my growth. She showed me more dents and stains throughout the house, and they all held a warm memory. After that visit, I never brought up moving again. In fact, I began to see things with my heart and not with my eyes, and discovered beauty in the most surprising places. Gail Lemon, 48, from Summersworth, New Hampshire. The Circle of Kindness, Blast from the Past. It was the 4th of July, and luck would have it, I was in the hospital recovering from gallbladder surgery with no family nearby and feeling a bit low. I shared with my nurse how I missed being a kid and going to the fireworks show downtown with my parents. Her, eye grew, her eyes grew nostalgic as she told me about the grand fireworks show she would go to as a young girl at her grandparents' lake house. We both agreed those were some of the best of times of our lives. That night, the same nurse came into my room. I knew she was supposed to be off duty by then, so I asked if someone had called in sick. She simply smiled and turned on the TV in time for the annual t TV fireworks show. Giggling, she turned off the lights and pulled the drapes and sat there on the edge of my bed, holding my hand. We both watched it in awe as burst of color filled the screen, each remembering days gone by. We even sang along to the patriotic songs that accompanied the spectacular display. Once the show was over, I was aglow. I hadn't felt that giddy child in a long time. Thank you, I said. Happy fourth to you, she replied with a grin. As she said good night to me, I smiled, knowing that because of her thoughtfulness, this has been a special holiday for both of us, one we could always remember. Crystal Helms, 61, Lorraine, Ohio. The Power of Love, a Precious Lullaby After my divorce, I adopted a golden retriever puppy named Delilah. I loved her companionship, kisses and cuddles, but she had a hard time at night sleeping in her new place. Nothing soothed her anxiety until I tried sitting at the piano in the living room, playing lullabies until she drifted off to sleep. It was a ritual that never failed. After a few weeks, she settled into her new home, and I stopped my evening concerts. About a year later, I was laid off from my job and fell into depression. Worried and unable to sleep, I sank down onto the sofa, battling a rush of tears. Suddenly, I startled as I heard the piano. I looked over at Delilah, standing on her hind legs by the piano, hitting the keys with her nose, and the notes were flat and clumsy, but it was the most comforting song in the world, a lullaby straight from her heart. Deeply touched, I gave her a hug, and we went off to bed. From that night on, I slept soundly knowing it would be okay and could overcome anything with my best friend by my side. Madeline Stanley, 65, from Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay. Before Bed Read, a heartfelt act of true heroism. This is love. 
When Airman Cassandra Burns got a call that her base's flag had broken free from its pole, she spent hours holding it up so it wouldn't touch the ground and learn the true meaning of patriotism. I was a new airman attending technical school in Monterey, California. I was assigned to charge of quarters CQ duty on July 4, 2008. An hour of very long, minimally manned shift, we got a call. The base flag straps had snapped in extreme wind of the early morning and the flag was falling. Another airman and I drove to the site to check things out, and a maintenance man who happened to be on the base had made the call and was attempting to lift the flag off the ground. The flag was unbelievably large, and the pole stood in a field off to the side of the road. My fellow airman, the ma maintenance worker, and I each took a corner of the flag and held it off the ground. It was extremely heavy and a difficult task for the three of us alone. My co-worker called us our sergeant to uniform the situation, and he had said, he would make some calls so and be there soon to assist as if he could. We were already feeling extreme weight of the flag in our six arms and knew that this was not going to be easy, but we never questioned the task that had fallen to us. Then we began to take turns using one hand to make calls and texts to friends and colleagues and try to acquire assistance. We were not incredibly confident that we would be successful in gaining ample assistance on the early morning of the 4th of July. It was Friday and the first day of a three-day holiday weekend. Most, most of our fellow students would be taking advantage of the time off for the holiday and be sleeping in. Many would already be headed to the beach for the Fourth and Fourth of July festivities and a much needed break from the intense, intense studies and duties that we perform daily. The sergeant arrived about an hour after we began and he was frantically trying to find someone who could fix the straps so we could raise the flag. His attempts were mainly answered with voicemail that informed him of the holiday closures and promise of a response on the next business day. Another hour passed and the sergeant took a corner to aid our aching arms as much as he could. He had exhausted all options and now the only thing he could do was wait. He continued to check his phone frequently, hoping for any response to our instruction. The four of us continued to hold Old Glory as high as our aching arms could. We ensured she didn't touch the ground, but our muscles were exhausted. The sun was also rising higher and it was getting hot. We saw a car pull up and two airmen and civvies started to walk toward us. Without instructions, they took their spot and bore some of the weight of the massive flag. They were friends of friends who were actively headed back from the beach to help that we had contacted. They informed us that they had already contacted a few more of their friends who were now on their way as well. About a half hour later, a few more cars pulled up of airmen coming to assist us with aided, added people. The flag was still incredibly heavy, but much more bearable than before. As more people arrived, we were able to hold the flag out more evenly, which aided in the weight distribution. We stood most silently, arms shaking, bows, brows dripping from the heat of the sun of more f than four hours. Finally, our sergeant got the call and instructed us to do our best to fold the flag up so n as no one was open for the holiday that could repair the broken straps and no honor guard was currently available. None of us were trained in the honor guard and had no idea how to properly fold the flag. We did the best and folded it neatly as we could. Afterward, we all shook hands and went our separate ways. Many headed out to celebrate our country's independence with beach barbecues. Some returned to their dorms for much needed rest. I returned to my Friday duties. Throughout the remainder of the day, I thought about how those of us who held that flag off the ground never asked why or gave up on a task many would have deserted. We were not trained for this. They did not teach us the basic training to keep the flag off the ground. I learned something that hot July day, seeing many young military members come together for a task many would consider futile, taught me that pr true patriotism is shown. In the selfless actions of those living in a country they love, the irony that all this happened on Independence Day was not lost on me. I think about it every fourth with a smile on my face. My arms have never ached for days. My arms have ached may have ached for days, but I have never had been prouder than that gargantian flag that had been there. But it flew higher in my eyes after that day, and I never once passed it again without a smile and newfound appreciation that I had gained all that it represented. On that day, I learned the meaning of true patriotism, and that's something I will never forget, Cassandra Burns. This is an inspiration guaranteed from Chicken Soup for the Soul, Military Families, 101 Stories About the the force behind the forces for more heartwarming stories of heroic acts of men and women who serve our country pick up a copy of chicken soup for the soul the military families available at amazon.com and wherever books are sold okay moving forward
This next spot is a relax and play, and it's so funny, I had to share this with you. It says, plant tags we need for our garden, which is sign for the times. One says, prayers needed. One says, when did I plant that? Another one says, the guy at the nursery said it was kill-proof, and it looks half dead. Somehow still alive. Another one says, thorns, watch out. So cool. Anyway, the horoscope by Marissa Brown for June 3rd through June 28th. If you're a Gemini, which is May 21st through June 20th, you'll be motivated to set a powerful goal on June 8th when the new moon and your solar eclipse are in your sign. Writing down the details can set you down an exciting path. Then, from June 22nd on, you're going to feel empowered to express your most imaginative ideas. You'll feel heard by all your loved ones. If you're a Libra, which is September 23rd through October 22nd, shake up your routine around June 10th when the new moon and the solar eclipse are in your ninth house of higher learning. Find ways to pick up new skills for a dose of motivation. And on June 24th, a heart-to-heart -heart with a friend helps you achieve mutual understanding. If you're an Aquarius, that's January 20th through February 18th, experiment with mind-body balance practices. Think yoga. Come June 20th, let your intuition lead the way. Then sharing innovative ideas comes naturally while Mercury moves towards your fifth house of self-expression around June 22nd. Channel your emotions into a creative outlet to soar. Cancer, that's June 21st through July 22nd. While the sun is in your sign from June 15th on, pursue your most ambitious goals. Making room for having fun along the way is the key to seeing those results you deserve. Then around June 24th, connect with a loved one or a dear friend. Quality time will bolster that bond. Now Scorpio, that's October 23rd through November 21st. Get out of that comfort zone while the sun is in your ninth house of adventure around June 20th. Whether you're t trying out new recipes or walking trails with eye-opening experiences, it can feel especially satisfying now. On June 25th, set aside rest restorative solo time to stay energized and stress-free. Now, if you're a Pisces, that's February 19th through March 20th, boost your sense of emotional security around June 5th by having that challenge by an important conversation with a loved one. You won't regret it. And from June 11th on, everyday routine that feel lighthearted and fun have you feeling even more vital. Dive in. Now, if you're a sexy Leo like yours truly, because, you know, I was born August 3rd. July 23rd through August 22nd, you're going to enjoy a blast of can-do energy uh, while Mars is in your sign from June 10th on. Whether you want to try a new wellness plan or lead the charge on a team effort at work, you can make your vision come a reality. Come June 27th, time spent on beloved pastimes and self-care will benefit your heart and soul. It's interesting they say June 27th. That would have been my grandma's birthday. Anyway. Sagittarius, November 22nd through December 21st. You'll be reflecting on your closest relationships around June 12th. Sharing how you feel can be a game changer. Come June 25th, you're going to be reaching culmination point to a project. Take time to appreciate what you've done before, diving into your next endeavor. Now, if you're in Aries, which is March 21st through April 19th, enjoying downtime with loved ones benefits your emotional well-being. The confident sun is in your fourth house of intimate affairs from June 20th on. You'll make heartwarming memories, and from June 27th on, consider exploring artistic impulses. It could bring you a sense of bliss. If you're a Virgo, now that's August 23rd through September 22nd, share a proposal for a passion project with someone you respect around June 22nd. Their input can help lay groundwork for a big win. Now, on June 24th, when the full moon is in your fifth house of self-expression, Catching up with loved ones will feel rejuvenating, so go for it. Now, if you're a Capricorn, December 22nd through January 19th, you may want to switch up your routine around June 10th when the new moon of the solar eclipse is falling in your sixth house of wellness. Making a change can benefit your mind and body. Then around June 23rd, devoting time to bonding with loved ones could be especially comforting. Taurus, which is April 20th through May 20th. Take care to organize your finances as Mercury moves through, moves forward in your second house of income from June 24th on. Getting clear on the details now can feel reassuring. Then come June 25th, take a road trip or plan a future travel. You're in for a thrill. Okay.
We've got two cute news here. It's uh, got five stories that will make you smile. Adorable. A doggone good time. In Minnesota, are you howling with laughter, cuties? These coyote pups were spotted in the woods with their protective mama, who seemed to be giving her tots a lesson in proper way to howl. It's hard to say just how seriously the youngsters took her advice, however, as they appeared far more interested in getting her to play. Sporty. The next great cat to let. An insta bull, the precious lion cub at the Ageland Park, has been having quite the ball. Staffers noticed the tot was getting a bit restless on rainy days, so they gave him a brightly colored basketball to lift his mood. Then the cub had a blast rolling it around the room, even tried to keep the toy away from the curious brother. But it seemed to treat it more like a game of football, as there was plenty of tackling involved. Precious Cuddle Buddies Kasantap Turkey Chimpanzee Can Bear Cub Pongnuck are adorably inseparable. Young Pongcock was brought to the, the uh, Ginzap Zoo as a rescue, and the keepers were worried about him adjusting to his new home. Their solution introduced him to the always welcoming can to help the baby bear with his socialing skills, and it worked. Now the unlikely friends are two peas in a pod. Cute, a star is born. Baltimore, welcome to the world, beautiful spotted sweetie. Meet the June, the newest Sitagunda sig calf to join the herd at Maryland Zoo. Sitagundas are swamp-dwelling swamp antelopes native to Africa, but this little one is still being cared for indoors for right now. Soon she'll be introduced to her outdoor enclosure with Mom Cricket by her side. Silly, ready to rock and roll. In Cutaquiba, Brazil, an Elvis sighting in Brazil? No, it's Brittany the duck doing her best impression of the king of rock and roll. The eight-month-old crested duck has a unique way of standing as a result of prior foot injury, but it doesn't make her any less popular. The funny pose combined with her stylish hair has made Brittany quite the Elvis impersonator around the farm, but you won't hear her crying about a hound dog. Her owners say this spunky duck prefers to spend her time with the canines instead of other birds. And we've got the last laugh now for fun. They have a little girl who's lounging with a nice drink in her hand, and she's got her bathing suit on. It says, this is just the, quote, me time I've been waiting for. Uh, they've got a little dog here. It says, did someone say barbecue? And he's licking his chomps. And that's all I have to share with you from The Last Laugh. And this has been a great book. There's more minute moments in there I know I didn't share with you that you don't want to miss out on. So be sure to pick up First for Women, June 28, 2021 issue. You won't regret it. I'm so glad we finally got through the whole magazine. I just wish I could drop it off tomorrow for my work mom, but apparently she's got plans. So thank you for tuning in today, and God bless, and I'll know I'll see you again. Well, heck, we've only done three videos. we got to do another one, so stay tuned.